Tonight, I'd like to ask you a question. If you had the chance to change the life trajectory of a child who'd experienced disadvantage and give them a sense of hope, would you? I began with Pathways in 2011, and in that year, the youngest child to take their life in Australia was nine years old, and that child was here in Queensland. Children who've experienced adversity or trauma, either lived or intergenerational, often exhibit behaviours that result in them being marginalised or stigmatised by the time they reach the school setting. We're often asked to come and work with these naughty kids, and they've been described to me as disruptive, they're attention seekers, they're manipulative, they're poor or sometimes fine. Would you want your child or grandchild to be labelled in that way because they're struggling? It's for these children and the educators and teachers who work with them and often are struggling themselves to find a way to connect with them that the Wing Supply Program was developed to build capacity and to help them to look beyond that behaviour at what was happening for that child. I'd like to tell you the story about a little boy I'll call Jane, who I met when he was four years old in an early youth centre that I was visiting one morning. Even though he'd been there for a few hours, Jane was sitting there alone with his backpack still strapped on, and he wasn't going to take it off. I talked to his educators and they said to me, we've tried everything, we've talked and talked and talked to him, but he won't do what we're asking and he won't join in. So, I don't know what else to do. I just hope one day he'll decide that he'll take it off and he'll come and join us. Jane has two sisters. Their parents went out one day, but they didn't come back for them. When they were found a few days later, they were understandably very distressed and they were starving. They were then put into the care of their grandparents and Jaden's granddad picks him up every afternoon from kindy. Jaden wasn't taking off that backpack because he was never going to get left behind again. He vigilantly watched the door for when granddad arrived to make sure that he was ready to go. When I was able to help those educators understand the impact of his early life, what that would have had on his brain development and what state he was in, they were not able to respond to that state of alarm. And eventually, Jamie took off his backpack. He started to join in, but most importantly, Jamie started to build some trust in adults again. The Wind Supply Program is a social emotional wellbeing program for children from birth to five. It's informed by neuroscience and it reflects the sequential way that the brain develops from the brain centre to the cortex, from the bottom up. We can't talk children into feeling or behaving differently. But what we can do is plan repetitive pattern rhythmic experiences that calm those clattering brains and soothe that state of alarm. And when children are in a calm state, then educators can build relationships with them and help them to start to develop social emotional skills. Natasha Marix is a team leader for Save the Children and she's going to speak to you about the impact of the Wing Supply program in Doomadu. So work is in um, our children and family centre of Dormitory Retraining and the Wings program and it's now embedded in our programs and activities, so things like play group, our school readiness camps and our parenting workshops. In terms of outcomes, our early childhood educators and family support workers have gained knowledge, knowledge and strategies around social and emotional development for children that have changed the way that they're working with these children in Dormitory. They now understand that these children are not bad and they're not naughty, and, but they require a difference in the way that the adults in their lives respond and engage with them. 
The benefit is reflected in the words of the prep teachers at the Doomagy School, who are commenting on the changes in these children's behaviours, their ability to regulate their emotions, and their readiness to learn because of this. WINS is really culturally appropriate and flexible to accommodate local culture and ways of working and parenting. It's an incredible program. I've trained in it three times myself. And I wholeheartedly, and Save the Children wholeheartedly supports the rollout of WINS program in the Gulf. If we give up on children, they give up on themselves. Then families lose hope and the children lose hope and communities begin to struggle. We would like to continue this work that we have begun in Doomagy by reaching other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities through that northern corridor from Mornington Island down through Burketown, down to Twankurri, to reach children, educators and families who otherwise would not have access to this program of repair and healing. It costs $550 for one person to be trained in the Wings to Fly program. For us to reach these remote communities, because of travel costs, we will need $10,000 for each regional training. When we are there, we're able to work also with elders, with families, with community agencies, so that we can build capacity, a common language around resilience and sustainability in that community. Professor Stuart Shanker says, if we see a child differently, we will see a different child. So tonight, you have the chance to change the life of a child. I invite you to support our work so that no child will be left behind because of their location or their circumstance and to ensure no child will ever be sitting again with his backpack still strapped on. <laughs>